Following on from my previous video about the connection between endometriosis and fibromyalgia, I thought it was best to take this a step ahead and see how we can improve our quality of life and treat fibromyalgia, especially if you have endometriosis. As always, please remember that nothing I say substitutes actual medical advice from a medical professional, so please seek a doctor for your personal case. Let's begin. How to treat fibromyalgia if you have endometriosis? Medication-wise, there are over-the-counter painkillers and then there are specific sleep medicines and fibromyalgia drugs that are supposed to reduce pain and calm overactive nerves by dampening pain signals. But my focus is more on the things you can do, like the non-medicine stuff. So here's my list. Number one, exercises, for fibromyalgia. This is not just great for those with fibromyalgia, but it helps improve hormone levels for those with endometriosis as well. Here are five specific exercises. Please make sure you consult with your doctor as to what form of exercise will work best for you because we all have different combination of issues that it's best to get the right advice before you go ahead. The first of the five is uh, yoga. Originated in India, yoga is a form of exercise that stimulates and relaxes the mind and body. Practicing yoga reduces pain, fatigue, aids in improving sleep, relaxes the mind, therefore, hopefully, also reducing depression. Plus, yoga isn't rigorous. It's slow-paced and helps you to tune your body by improving its alignment. In 2010, during an eight-week study with 53 women, it was found that yoga helped manage fibromyalgia symptoms better than those who did not take part in, in the yoga study. i link that study in the description box. Again, please do ask your doctor before you go ahead with yoga as additional medical issues may restrict you from certain poses. For example, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome, which can easily make me dizzy. So I need to be extra careful in forward bending exercises and need to be extra vigilant to not hyperextend. Number two is Pilates. Pilates is no impact and gentle on the body. It is geared towards exercising muscles by isolating them and focusing movement only on those muscles. This aids in stretching, strengthening and toning the body. By focusing on the core area, Pilates allows us to reduce impact on the back and limbs. If you're not someone who is very active, please consult your doctor and physiotherapist and ease into Pilates. Because Pilates may look easy and gentle, but this then opens us up, opens us up to overdoing it. So take it easy and don't forget to make sure to always let your instructor know of your pain areas and be vocal about what is what is and isn't working for you. Well, this actually advice goes for any type of exercise when facing a chronic illness or an injury. Number three, Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a Chinese martial art, but it isn't quick or taxing on the body. In fact, it improves balance, muscle strength and flexibility. The benefits remind me of yoga but the practice is very different as Tai Chi is about slow movement, one pose gliding into the next. It helps to unblock and improve the body's energy flow, also known as Qi. To understand more about Tai Chi, I'd suggest reading what Harvard Medical say and also having a look at this study that I will link on 226 people, <clears throat> which explains the beneficial effects of Tai Chi for those who, have, who had active fibromyalgia for nine years. Like I said, I'm going to link the study and I'll quote them here as well. Some patients with fibromyalgia, however, struggle with exercise programs. This study showed that Tai Chi appears to be as effective or better for managing fibromyalgia, that a longer duration of Tai Chi results in greater benefits and that patients are more likely to attend Tai Chi classes." Unquote. Number four, aerobics. In general, the benefits of aerobic exercises aren't just limited to agility and strength, 
but it also helps break down fat by burning the extra calories we store up. But as I was mentioning earlier, it's extremely important when taking on any form of exercise when having a chronic condition like fibromyalgia to understand how active you currently are, what your pain levels are, what areas are stiff for you, and what your movement goals are. Goals are very important. I specifically mention this under aerobic exercises, which can be anything from treadmill, the elliptical machine, to swimming, because you don't want to get caught overdoing it, as this form of exercise can be most strenuous. Again, as always, consult your doctor and physiotherapist. Let your physio ease you into various types of, various levels of exercise. Number five, walking. I could have mentioned walking under aerobic exercises, but I deliberately did it, and it probably comes under that as well, sort of. I wish to emphasize the importance of starting simple. If, like me, you were stuck in bed for many months with minimal movement, even a five minute walk will help improve muscle function. I started with five minutes every day for a week, then I increased it to seven minutes, then 10, and now I'm up at 30, 30 minutes, and sometimes even more. This improved my activity levels and put me in a better position to take on some of the exercises I've just mentioned. It's just essential to listen to your body and prepare it gently. We don't want to set ourselves back by inviting flare-ups which don't help us psychologically either. Now, with those five exercises explained, I'll get back onto my list of 11 ways to treat fibro. So the first was exercising. Now number two, physiotherapy. Fibromyalgia causes joint pain and muscle tenderness. All of this can lead to stiffness in the body. This is where a physiotherapy, physiotherapist steps in. A therapist can help improve your pain levels by opening up and releasing stiff muscles and joints. This helps to increase the range in which your joint moves. What we tend to forget is that stiffness in one joint or muscle can cause spasms and further stiffness in surrounding muscles and joints. So if we tackle the primary joint, we save ourselves from a ripple effect of pain. Physiotherapy offers us a range of treatments from manual therapy, taping. I've done a video on my taping, which I'll link. Then there's aqua therapy, wax therapy. I've done a quick Instagram video on this as well, which I'll link. There is ultrasound therapy, and then there is the use of resistance bands to help build strength after the stiffness has been reduced. What I'm trying to get at is that a physiotherapist can do so much to help you improve problem areas. And when those problem areas are being tackled, it makes carrying out the suggested exercises so much easier. Number three, diet for fibromyalgia. Whether you have fibromyalgia, endometriosis, or both, an, in, an anti-inflammatory diet plays quite a helpful role in controlling pain. What we must remember is that every single thing we do to help our bodies is a piece to the puzzle. So a well-informed diet, especially after consulting a nutritionist who understands your medical issues and looks at your current diet is essential. I personally made six changes to my diet, which have helped me immensely not just with my pain levels, but also helping me to feel light, rather than feeling this heaviness in my chest while eating, which could contribute to my fatigue. I've done a video on this endometriosis-friendly diet, which also helps my fibromyalgia. I link that in the description box as well. Number four, vitamins. The, I, I, the additional nutrients of vitamins and minerals we need when fighting a chronic condition like fibromyalgia may not always be extracted through our diet, especially because of the deterioration in food quality. Therefore, there are some vitamin essentials that may need to be taken. Please remember to always consult with your doctor and your nutritionist before adding any vitamins, minerals, protein powders to your diet. Each patient needs to be assessed based on their needs, so please seek professional medical advice. But to help you get started, when speaking to your doctor and nutritionist, you can use the guide, the information I'm about to tell you. So there is a curcumin. Turmeric is anti-inflammatory and its main ingredient is curcumin, 
which is known to reduce symptoms of pain, dizziness, cramps, paresthesia, and improve levels of fatigue in patients with fibromyalgia. This vitamin D. Many of us do not get adequate amount of sun, which helps keep our bones strong. Therefore, after being tested and your vitamin D levels being low, you may need to supplement. You may need supplements that will not just strengthen your bones, but will reduce inflammation and improve muscle strength. Then there's coenzyme Q10. This helps to convert food into energy and is also known to help fibromyalgia symptoms. To arm yourself with the exact information, I'll mention the link where I've got this information from. Please do read it thoroughly as it explains the studies done on the suggested vitamins and supplements. Number five, meditation. Meditation is a technique used to calm the mind and help develop mental clarity. I cannot stress enough how med meditation can help calm the mind, reduce anxiety, and help to reduce and even eliminate depression if done for a sustained period of time. Many feel overwhelmed by the idea of meditation. I was too, yet it's very easy to get started. You'll need to begin by sitting in a comfortable position, close your eyes and focus on your breathing. If thoughts entertain your mind, you're not to engage or converse with it. Let the thoughts come and go. Start by doing this for five minutes every day and slowly add two minutes at a time. Start adding when you start feel starting to feel more confident and comfortable, of course. I will do my best, I think, to create a video on this at some point. Number six, acupuncture. Acupuncture is when very thin needles are inserted at specific points in the body. Healthline.com says, and I quote them, a study in the Journal of Rehabilitative Medicine found that people with FM who receive acupuncture, benef acupuncture benefited from pain relief for at least two years compared to those who didn't. For those who cannot tolerate the needles, acupressure may be an option." Unquote. Please note, FM means fibromyalgia. I've always felt that it's better to try alternative therapies for at least three to six months. It's usually better than taking heavy sleep inducing drugs, but that's obviously my opinion for my body. You have to take a call for yourself with the help of your doctor. Number seven, pillow and mattress. Just like meditation, I cannot stress enough how important it is to sleep on a mattress you are comfortable on. Personally, I found that spongy soft mattresses add to my musculoskeletal pains, whereas a harder mattress took away the morning aches I'd have. Basically, it didn't add to my issues, whereas earlier it did. The same goes for my pillow. Sometimes too soft uh, caves my neck into awkward positions, causing neck and jaw issues along with migraines. Here, a memory foam pillow has worked better for me. But again, nothing very soft. Number eight, occupational therapy. Looking at the long list of responsibilities of an occupational therapist, the one that stands out for me the most and I feel is most essential is when an OT evaluates your home and your work environment. They help to identify improvements that can drastically create a better quality of life for you. For example, showing you how to make things more effectively accessible around the house. Even something as simple as explaining how to get up, how to move, what precautions to take, or even how to wear clothes that reduce strain on problem areas is what an OT helps with, when in, which in turn gives the patients more confidence to function and hopefully improve independence levels as well. Number nine, CBD oil. CBD is a chemical found in the marijuana plant. More and more patients are getting inclined to using CBD oils for pain relief and the reduction of inflammation. Do remember that CBD oil needs the presence of fat in order to be absorbed in the skin. Therefore, it requires a carrier oil like coconut, hemp seed, olive oil or even ghee to help it penetrate. But if you're not looking to apply it and want other alternatives, then I found a resource that lit lists additional ways in which you can take CBD oil. I link that in the description box. If you're still looking for more information on CBD and fibromyalgia, then there is a resource from healthline.com that seems to help, seems 
most helpful to me. I link that as well. Number 10, aromatherapy. Now, now, who doesn't like a pleasant, soothing smelling room? Well, you may not if you're triggered by smells like I am sometimes. But in all honesty, natural scents like lavender, peppermint, eucalyptus, lemon have never troubled me. In fact, they help relax or uplift my mind or even help my sleep, depending on the aroma I'm choosing, of course. Aroma oils are believed to help fibromyalgia patients with their sleep, fatigue levels, muscle spasms, restless leg syndrome, and so much more. So for example, peppermint oil is an analgesic, antispasmodic, and an anti-inflammatory, whereas lavender oil can help with sleep issues. I believe that once you clear up any allergy issues or other triggers with your doctor, aromatherapy can provide a comfortable and fragrant form of complementary therapy that can work well at the end of an exercise routine. It can help ease the muscles and hopefully aid in maintaining a routine. Number 11, the last one, counseling. Chronic illnesses don't just trouble the body's balance, but the mind's balance as well. Speaking to a professional helps reduce and remove the mental clutter we harbor for various reasons. Patients are constantly gaslighted by doctors, friends, family, and even those with no significance. And then of course, the pain plays its own tricks on the mind. It can really hurt the mind, leading to anxiety, depression, and a loss of personality. Counseling helps to release the stresses that come from all of this. A healthy mind is another piece to the puzzle, another important way to help the body towards better health. We must remember, what we must remember is that we need to figure out our own formula. We need to create our own combination of a helpful diet, the therapies and exercises, which then needs to, be, needs to evolve based on our progress or adapt when we face a sudden flare-up. Now, that's really it from me for this list. If you believe that this has been helpful to you or maybe helpful to someone you know, then please pass this on. The idea of putting together all the videos that I do is to help build awareness on what we can do to help ourselves. Thank you for watching. I mean, if you feel I have missed out on a treatment that works for fibromyalgia patients, then please do share in the comment section below. Also, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.